Hi, this is Shady. Today we're gonna be visiting some old catch wrestling spine locks. Of course, a lot of you may know that judo and jujitsu had a lot of spine locks in the past. Up until the year 1925, you could do them in judo, but of course, due to safety and the explosive nature of judo, they had to go and they can be very dangerous. It's not something I oppose, of course, because it can just simply happen in an instance. There are people passing guard that uh, the other one gets simply paralyzed and uh, it's not a joke. So, But nonetheless, it's always good to revisit them and learn from them. So uh, between judo and catch, there is, of course, the calf slice. It's very common. And from this position, there was always the possibility to pull. And that will create a bend in the spine. And you see it uh, constantly, especially in old catch wrestling. So first, let's start with judo. So this is from the book, uh, My Method of Judo by Kawa Ishii. And here you can see, so right off the bat, it's a very judo position the guard and you wrap the head you grab your belt and what you do is you scissor your legs away from you and you pull and retract your shoulders back as you are holding the head and what we'll do is it will create a huge stretch on the spine particularly the neck area and of course you get the tap but obviously this can be very dangerous and uh, it can cause serious injuries the next one is tomoe hishigi this one happens way more often than you think and i'm sure many of you have this happen to them without them knowing so someone is trying a double underhook pass and they're trying to lift you and they put a lot of pressure on the back of your neck it happens way too often me personally this has happened and uh, I believe there was a footage of someone injuring their neck from this and just going completely uh, unconscious by a very vicious uh, guard pass attempt uh, with this particular method. They didn't know that they were actually doing this. I believe I made a video on it. I'll link it at the end. And uh, here you see it from sideways, how the pressure can be put on you. So you have um, the back of the shoulders and the back of the neck on the ground and someone is putting their weight right on top causing a huge curve in the spine and a lot of pressure on the back of the neck and again these are very judo positions so you would expect that the spine locks can come from these positions something that's not uh, the same in catch wrestling and we're gonna see it in just a short moment so like i said this can happen way too often than you think and i'm sure many of you had this happen to them without them knowing that this is an actual technique. So now let's take a look at it from a catch uh, position, perspective, uh, technique, etc. Obviously, um, old wrestling, catch, freestyle, etc. You have the Nelson, so quarter, half, and uh, full Nelson. And here you see, as you do it and apply it, there's a lot of pressure on the head and the neck to push downwards and so this exposes the back of the neck so when you are in this position on one knee and you are holding with your torso the their torso uh, upside down you can expect a lot of pressure on the back of the neck uh, or the side of the neck depending on the head position and of course this can cause the same problem as tomoe hishigi so this next one here so notice how catch have a lot of uh, sophistication regarding their spine lock uh, positions so the way to get to these is obviously not easy and uh, it's very sophisticated but at the same time it's very efficacious so um, this is something that's not done in judo for very good reasons but it doesn't hurt to look at it and learn so here you see from the back take uh, you can see you have the arm pinned down and you have the thigh gripped so he can easily maintain his grips and pull backwards and this what will do is actually cause a bend in the spine and of course this can be very uh, 
serious and we're gonna realize this because um, in judo they actually saw this as a problem and they realized that bending i'm sorry stretching the leg in this particular strangle the okuri eri jime especially when you're on your back if you are performing it uh, what you are doing is you are pushing the leg on that's on the waist or the ribs you are pushing it and you are pulling or sliding away the collar and stretching the leg that can cause a bend in the spine so they kept the submission luckily but they actually uh band the stretching of the leg that you are hooking so just hold the pants on the knee level so obviously we cannot talk about catch and spine locks without of course mentioning the twister here you see uh, castello performing it um, you are hooking the far leg and you are doing this uh, sorry uh, forgive me uh, my na grip naming is not very good so uh, here you see the S grip, if I'm not mistaken, and he pulls on the head. So notice how the waist is facing to the waist is facing towards you, and then he pulls the head towards him. So this will create a huge torsion on the spine, and of course, uh, it's a very serious and very efficient submission. Now let's go to something more sadistic. Personally, I don't see doing anyone doing this from any position or any. Uh, type of sparring unless they flatten themselves out trying to you know prevent the reversal here you see same thing all you have to do is just grab the back of the head the chin and start twisting of course this is banned I'm, I'm not sure about the current state of catch today but this can obviously lead to a lot of injuries and of course death so here you see they are not as refined as the stuff that we saw before from both judo and catch as catch can but nonetheless they're very efficient this one all you have to do is just sit on them pull their shoulders and of course break the spine it's called say hishigi or back crusher this one same thing but doing sparring i don't see how anyone can actually get into this position so it's really interesting that uh, this has been put there so this is from 1913 the book uh, you can find it on amazon and uh, i'll try to leave uh, as much as reference as possible in the description so um, as you can see uh, there are very serious submissions and in judo at least they're banned and personally i think it's for a good reason you can go out like that not only uh, get seriously injured and have your career ended but you can either lose uh, the ability to walk or the ability to move your body from the neck down or even possibly die so it's no joke uh, and uh, it's done for a good reason so if you have anything to add please let me know down below this was shady and thank you for listening